Well, well, do you always want to try to go after who's on top? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, I, mean, I, I mean, Alabama, Auburn, the SEC in general, Florida with their couple championships, mm -hmm. three championships. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable league. I mean, you can say whatever you want. And yes, they have not played well, especially the SEC West. But right now, the SEC is 5-4 and four in bowl games. 5-4. and four. They still have an over 500 record. That's fine. I understand that they have not played well. I get that. A lot of us would have expected them to be nine and zero. Right. I, I don't think. I think even the Auburn game was, was not the critical one. I thought. I think it was the two Mississippi games. Uh, right. Yep. And they, 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 were, they were they were at the top of that specifically so Ole Miss. Yeah. Okay. Because they had the number one scoring defense, right. and we're known for defense in this conference, and they just got embarrassed. I mean, you had to give hats off to TCU. They played unbelievably. And then Mississippi State last night. Yeah. Who and, and the I think they were losing in, in, in a major choke job today. I mean, TCU now is going to wait and see what happens tonight, and uh, if, if, if Alabama wins this game convincingly, then they're, they're going to make a lot of noise about they should have been in, but right now Alabama has problems with its own. Yeah. This is the exact start that you would want if you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan. See, they got the formation fixed now. Now Evan, Evan Spencer is on the line of scrimmage. Play action. Got the corner end zone. Ball floating a little bit. And we'll watch, we'll watch Cardell Jones. Sometimes when you're a young passer, when the ball goes high, it's because you're gripping it a little bit tight, which means you're a little bit anxious. You're a little bit nervous. So he hasn't necessarily settled in. And when you see a guy miss high, it's because he's gripping it a little bit and it's flying and carrying. Right there, evident that Cardell Jones is a little bit nervous to start this game. What's the call here, Greg? Well, you got three receivers set down here. Let's see what Alabama has. I would assume... Probably if they got a one-on-one, -on -one. no, you're not going to have one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe a little stick knot principle down here. Small. Uh, the, the, the guy in the front row just got hit by the ball. That was not a good pass. Uh, a quick reminder, by the way, and that was kind of stand there for uh, Alabama. This is an alternate broadcast. Uh, the game is on ESPN. We're getting some people confused for the second time, but we're not talking over the game. This is The game is on ESPN. Uh, we are showing the game with commentary, so I would say that was a pretty good stop there for Alabama. But. It, was a, it was a huge stop because you missed three or four tackles on the long run by Ezekiel Elliott, and you stiffened in the red zone. And we saw earlier today Florida State had some drives and stalled in the red zone. And when you don't put up touchdowns in a game like this, it can come back to haunt you. I think all in all, Nick Saban is happy right now. Happy might be an exaggeration. Well, I mean, <laughs> has he ever been happy? Well, the score could have been 7 nothing. <laughs> All right, so we'll go back and look at the long run here by Ezekiel Elliott. We'll go and inside exactly what happened. You're going to watch Jacoby Boren, the center, pull out and around and try to get action on the top. A good job on the front side by Ohio State blocking. But frankly, you look at it, the wide receiver, Michael Thomas, number three, doesn't really get a good block, doesn't win. And Eddie Jackson's got to do a better job of breaking down and shooting the gun at the defend at the runner's knees. Instead, he settles for the hesitate, loses contain, and then you're out to the gate. And a bad job by Landon Collins, too. That's a poor angle. He trips up a little bit. I understand that. But the boundary's your friend. you got to try to sell out, do anything you can to get him out of bounds, and make the guy... Make the guy uh, have to run back inside. And that was a poor effort by Ryan Anderson. I mean, come on. Yeah. He looks like he's jogging there. I mean, that, that, to me, it's okay to make mistakes, but when you do it because of a lack of effort, and that's three missed tackles right there, that's inexcusable right there. It looked, inexcusable. Like, it looked like to me he thought that Jackson was going to make the play. I mean, you're right. I didn't like the pursuit. I didn't like that he was running at a flat angle instead of the angle where the running back is going to be. Right. Always run where the runner is going to be. Uh, a few steps down the down the field. Let's grab a call here. John is in Ohio. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Thank you. Go right ahead. You're on. You're on. You're on the program. All right. I think uh, Alabama is likely to lose this game. If you look at the record between Urban Meyer and Nick Saban, Urban Meyer has the upper hand in this game. I believe. Well, actually, our, uh, Nick Saban has the upper hand. But uh, <laughs> what's your point? I'm thinking Urban Meyer is like, as you see how many championships he brought Florida. Yeah, you know, I, I'm afraid, to do John, I think you celebrated too much on your Eve, but I but I appreciate the call. Anyway, uh, yeah, the, the record is two and one. And I don't, right. for, in spite of all the hype, I don't think that really makes a bit of difference. It's 2015. Yeah. You two haven't played since 2010. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a different school. Right. It's just, right. It doesn't really. Yeah. It, we Perfect made a beat Ohio State when he was in Florida. <laughs> we're, we're, we make a big deal out of the coaching matchup, and sure, it's a huge deal. Six national championships <laughs> between the two coaches, but it's not about the Floridas of 2008. It's not about the Alabamas of 2009. It's about the Ohio State and the Alabamas of 2014 and 15. The past, rip it off. It is not influential whatsoever. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to disagree just a little bit because I think when you have some of the same guys calling plays, let's not ever forget Urban Meyer's influence on this offense. He, he has called plays against Kirby Smart and Nick Saban before. Let's not forget uh, Nick Saban that, against Urban Meyer. That's so, good point. so that influence is going to be there. No, you don't have the same players. I understand it's different schools, but the thought problem, you only have one mind. I know you may have two up there because you're so smart. You're a Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> but at the same time, you have to call plays from what you know, and those guys and, only know who they are. And the only time Urban Meyer has ever beaten Nick Saban, the guy that was calling the plays, was a guy by the name of Dan Mullen, who people in this conference know well. Mm -hmm. So, and by, and by the way, Lane Kiffin has battled Urban Meyer one time as a head coach as well and lost barely. Nice play here. Right now, Paul, what you see is is the momentum because of the missed tackles. Right now, even though it's early, it's clearly with Ohio State. We talked about them getting off to a good start. This is the start they need. Now, the confidence will only continue to grow for well, Ohio State. Well, it's just in the Iron Bowl, uh, the inability to score touchdowns in the red zone. Mm -hmm. We've seen this once now. It's, I, mean, I realize it's early to start making assumptions, but uh, how important is this series? Greg for Alabama. It's very important. Get back on track. Get the guys feeling good. Anytime you go three and out to start the game, you're reeling a little bit. You're, you're a little nervous. Expect them to lean heavily on the run game on this drive and try to, like we said early, establish the line of scrimmage. Well, that's what they do. Anytime Alabama sniffs trouble, they're going to run the football. Um, no. Play action. To who, though? <laughs> Amari Cooper. And they're doubling Amari. I mean, they're doubling Amari Cooper with a safety and a corner. Over the top. And they're still able to get this ball in because of what Amari does. He presses up into the cornerback and comes straight down the line. Not so good from a wide receiver perspective. On a quarterback, it really makes it easier when you know exactly where he's going to be. You know, yelled in earlier, we know he was kind of limited with the, uh, with the leg injuries. A lot of injuries so far. And I understand they're they they a two-back system. Yeldon is a different cat. He's the type of guy he can cut on a dime and give you nine cents change right now. And the fact that he's not in there lets me know that, or here he comes. The fact that he wasn't in there early on. That's not one play, I think, the way. Yeah, he, right, right. But, you, but he, he's, he's just starting tailback. tailback. So, are you, what, what do you expect here, Greg? Well, you have to get something here. Yeah. I mean, this is a, this this is a, is a really huge, big play. This is a huge play early in the game just to try to swing the momentum a little bit. I think you try to find the Cooper, who's in a cut split at the top. No, Cooper's down here solo. Here we go, a little underneath route. There he oh. Trying to get to Cooper on the deep crease route. Bad throw by what we say about throwing high. That's when you're feeling a little bit nervous. Blake Sims, obviously, a little bit antsy at the beginning of this game, and rightfully so. There's a lot on the line, a lot of expectations. And what did we talk about Blake Sims getting off to a good start? I mean, it's really important. He's kind of a streaky passer. So short, Both quick pass. The iron ball in the, the SEC championship game. Alabama started pretty well and then came back a little bit. So, I mean, you, you can't read too much. Yeah. You know, I, I don't read much into this, right? It's, it's early. It's three to nothing. That's just four minutes in. Yeah, it's, it's four <laughs> minutes in. Alabama's a defensive football team. <laughs> if their defense settles down, their entire team will settle down. One thing, their punter doesn't need to settle down. down. That is. Make the tackle. There you go. Knock the helmet off. That's a guy you're going to have to be aware of throughout the course of the game is Jalen Marshall. He's an explosive player, does a good job in the return game, and they will hit him on some of those jet sweeps that Ohio State does so often. That is just a booming tip. A good hit by Jarek Williams. I can feel that. I mean, fifth-year senior, let me talk about special teams. That's such a key in a big game like this because it can switch momentum. Right now, you're starting at the 20-yard line. Bama goes three and out, and look where their, their opponent is. It's not like the field position is lean heavily in favor of Ohio State. No run game. Fumble under. Turnovers, Mandan Collins. 
That's a great script right there. So often you see fumbles when the defender is coming from behind, very aware, and a young, mm -hmm. a big mistake by a young player there. Only a sophomore, Ezekiel Elliott. That's a great job. Not giving up on the play. Mm. That's a great, Eddie great Jackson. job by Eddie Jackson. Yeah, watch him come in. Just and now, punch. you have the ball in the plus territory at the 20-yard line. Or at, uh, what, at the 25-yard line? Yeah, 25 wherever it may be. Right now. Look for Alabama to try to get a shot here. They have momentum. Alabama always likes to take advantage of the momentum that was just recently given to them. What is Lane Kiffin's in home? Down, quarterback run, settling Blake Sims down. That's one thing when you're a quarterback, if you like to get that first hit out of the way. And frankly, Blake has not thrown the ball well early in this game. Let him run the ball, do the other facet of his game that he does so well, get him feeling comfortable. Yeah, because he was a former running back, so I'm sure he feels very, very comfortable. There comes Henry, though. Great blocking right there at the point of attack. With tremendous blocking right there. Wow. He's only a freshman, but tremendous block to the left side there. Cam Robinson, Juan Joe. And look at the formation, too. I mean, look who's in the backfield. Christian Jones is in the backfield, and he does the cut back across. We've always talked about, about Lane Kiffin and his ability to formation the defense. That's a wide receiver. He's standing where a fullback would be. He runs across and just tries to seal the backside, so he's basically out of the play. And this is just wide open. Look at the double team by Ryan Kelly. Ari Kwanjo, all SEC performer. Look, look at him getting to the second level. That's outstanding job by Alabama and establishing the line of scrimmage. We will take a short break. Alabama up 7-3. Back to the film room and your phone calls when we return. No matter how well you provide for your family today, if you don't have life insurance, their future may be at risk. Think about what would happen if you were gone. Would they struggle to pay the bills and face an uncertain future? They don't have to. You can help guarantee those you love 200, 500, direct.com. I'm Dari Noka, and you're watching the SEC Network. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Looks pretty focused. Well, at least he might have is. I think he's pretty focused. <laughs> he's not recruiting. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's not texting anymore right now. Alabama bringing heat right here. And the college coming off the edge. Devin Smith. And, and here's the thing about Devin Smith. If you look at Devin Smith, he's got 29 touchdowns in his career, Paul. 23 of them have been over 20 yards. He's their big play guy. He's averaging 26 yards a catch. This is just a bad play by Washington. I mean, he takes a poor angle. He runs flat towards the sideline. He doesn't go, and you can't, and when you're playing a cover two, just like that, they're playing a cover two with a blitz. You cannot allow the defenders, the, the wide receivers, to get behind you right there. That's exactly what Devin Smith did. Let's uh, grab a call. Oh, okay. Let's probably grab a call here quickly. How about uh, Matt in New York? Matt, thanks for the phone call. Good evening. Hey, how you doing, Paul? I'm well, thanks. Uh, I just, I'm thinking right now, Cardell Jones looks like a polished quarterback, and Alabama looks a little rattled. I saw Derrick Henry. I mean, uh, yeah, Derrick Henry had a great run, but I think. Uh, Ohio State, they got a chip on their shoulder right now, and, they're, and they and they want to prove to the world that they're the real deal, and they deserve to be in this playoff. Well, I mean, it's an interesting point, I mean, but on the other hand, Booger, they, they've had him a couple of times and let him go. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't call him a polished quarterback just yet. I mean, he's one for six. six. I mean, I don't, know if I, I don't know if I'd say he's a second he's coming out. Sure yeah, uh, but he's making plays right now. He's gotten comfortable running the football up through the tackles, north and south. And right there, he's anytime he needs a big play, he's going to Devin Smith, as I stated earlier. 
And right now, Ohio State's best offense has been self-inflicted mistakes by the Alabama defense. Mm -hmm. Right there, Washington running flat downhill, allowing Devin Smith to get behind him, and a missed tackle by Eddie Jackson early that resulted in a big Ezekiel Elliott run. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you definitely expect quarterback draw here. 